thank you, Deputy President Officer. We will support Labour's uh, amendment today, as I think it neatly sets out the reasons for opposing the Conservative Government's trade union legislation. It argues for a progressive approach to industrial relations, along with greater, not fewer, protections for workers. It states that at its heart, we need a fairer and a stronger economy. And I would argue that the Conservatives have been cavalier, cavalier with the EU retained law bill, throwing out perfectly good legislation in a cavalier fashion, but also cavalier with its minimum standards bill. I think it's a sign of defeat from the Conservative government that they're incapable of negotiating agreements with trade unions. And to resort to those minimum standards is very aggressive and no way to have a more, a fairer and a stronger economy. Uh, three years on from leaving the European Union and six years plus on from uh, the, the vote on Brexit, let me get this off my chest. I think we were right about Brexit and we were right to campaign against Brexit. And I will always maintain that Britain made a mistake by leaving the European Union. Euro Europe's largest stock market is now Paris, not London. The Minister rightly said the Centre for European Reform has highlighted that GDP is down compared with the last quarter of 2022 if we otherwise had been in the European Union, that investment is down, that goods trade is lower. We are poorer as a result of leaving the European Union. Mark Carney said in 2016 the British economy was 90% the size of Germany's, now it's 70%. And devaluation that came with that did not result in the exports boost that would normally come because of the trade barriers that we had set up as a result of Brexit. Michael Saunders, formerly from the Bank's Monetary Policy Committee, said the UK economy as a whole has been permanently damaged by Brexit and there has been no tangible Brexit freedoms. We have not diverged on standards or regulations. Other than copying EU trade agreements, the UK has only secured deals with Australia and New Zealand, and even the farming minister that partly negotiated that deal has now condemned that deal. But it was disappointing that when I asked the minister about the keeping pace powers, he didn't have a clue about what actual keeping pace powers we have utilised. And that says something about the rhetoric of this government. It states position, but it rarely follows through. It uses issues like Europe to advance independence rather than campaign on Europe in its own right. Even today's motion, tying it up with workers' rights, is an indication that their tools as an argument for independence rather than issues in their own right. Now, I've got a constructive approach today about Europe. The public mood has turned against Brexit. I think there's no doubt about that. The change in mood means that I am more optimistic about our relationship with the European Union than I have been for some time. There are now efforts across the political spectrum to re-engage. All the UK debate at present is about working with rather than working apart from the European Union. Now, I do not believe the Conservatives were ever thinking about adopting a Swiss model, but it does reveal a line of thinking. Labour now talks about making Brexit work. My party, I would argue, has a a gradualist approach, something that the SNP might be uh, familiar with. We need pragmatism to remove barriers and align where it is of mutual benefit. Let me give you some practical examples about how this could be done. Sarah Boyack already referred to the Erasmus Plus scheme. We could get on and do what Wales are doing already with the TAFE scheme. They have got students right now that are benefiting, not just now, they are benefiting right now from exchange in other European countries. Why on earth? Has this government still not moved forward on the Erasmus Plus scheme? We could do that now. We should be an associate member of the Horizon University Research Funding Scheme. We could have mutual recognition on trades and professions to allow people to work across the UK and the EU, not just now. Mutual recognition between the UK reach and the EU reach chemicals arrangements. We should we could agree a bespoke veterinary agreement to reduce SPS checks at the border. We need advanced linkage between the UK and the EU emissions trading schemes. And I hope the EU will remove the block of the UK application to the Lagano Convention, which provides for the recognition and enforcement of a wide range of civil and commercial judgments between the EU and EFTA states. With all of that closer relationship comes the easing, I would argue, 
of the tension in Northern Ireland, which is at the centre of this. It's in the interest of the EU and the UK to be close. We trade, we are Europeans, we share culture, have common interests, and we need to settle this. But we also need to learn the lessons of Brexit, not repeat them with independence. If the last six years has taught us at least one thing, it is that breaking up is hard to do. Even those supporters of independence have warnings about the current plans. Their growth commission admits the volatility of small economies. They say independence would mean cuts for up to 10 years. Independence supporter, senior independence supporter, Jonathan Shafi, said sterilisation cleaves so tightly with the economic infrastructure of the United Kingdom that it undermines the point of pursuing the project at all. That esteemed colleague Patrick Harvey said we'd gain political independence without real economic control. The Growth Commission agrees it would cede effective sovereignty over monetary policy. And this is where it's important for this debate. Because they all say sterilisation erects barriers to joining the European Union. Professor Richard Murphy said, without using a Scottish currency, Scotland cannot join the European Union. So for as long as we had sterilisation, we would not only be dependent on the economic decisions of a foreign country over which we had no control, but we'd also be prevented from joining the European Union because we didn't have our own currency. And that would take 10 years. And the First Minister recently admitted that there would be checks at the border with England after years of denial. So let's get this straight. A decade of super isolation, stuck on our own outside the UK and the EU, all in the words of independence supporters. If we thought Brexit was damaging, just wait for independence. Uh, thank you, Mr.